Sure. All right, guys, we're going to start the live event and we'll give you guys a few minutes to log in. I'm going to give everyone one more minute and then we're going to start.
All right, guys, um, good afternoon. Thank you for coming out to this event. Uh, my name is Ricky. I'm one of the technical directors here for the DSC. We're going to be going over an API series for the next couple of weeks. It's going to start with this one, which is a basic overview about the theory, why we might use it, some examples, and then time to brainstorm and discuss any ideas about how we could use it. Um, I want to pull up real quick the next slide so you guys can have a minute to check in. And you can follow the link or the QR code and get situated. So while you guys are doing that, I also wanted to go over just a little bit about what we're learning today. Um, APIs are a way to interface with a variety of systems for a variety of means. Um, this is gonna be more of like a high level discussion about just in general, what's the basics, um, how do we use it? And again, what can we do with it? later on as we get involved in a project. So I want to start with kind of the theory. We'll take in a baby steps. Um, we're going to be looking at like Google Maps and um, a couple other APIs. We're going to be discussing the REST API in a little bit more detail. And again, like as you're going through this, if you have questions, please let me know in the chat box. You can also write down notes separately and ask me at one of the discussion points and you're always welcome to reach out at any point to the group in our Slack chat. All right, so the guiding question that we want to consider while we're going through this is how can we build an API that provides a service to a group of people? And again, we want to think about this because that's what our project is going to do by the end of the year. Like I mentioned, um, for the outcomes, you should understand the theory behind an API and specifically a REST API, the reasons why we might want to use it, and the reasons why APIs are used in development systems, and the basic workflow of what does an API do. And by the end, you should be able to determine how we can use it in projects. Um, you should be able to brainstorm with us to come up with an application and really plan the fundamentals for if you had to make your own API. Like if you had to make one from scratch, which we're gonna be doing, well, where do we start with that? What is it? What's the best way to use it? All right, so I had a quick video for you about what an API is. We're gonna see some of this like in detail, but this will just give you a quick three minute overview about the system itself. Hey, I'm sorry. Um, somebody just said we can't hear any audio. Are you guys having that problem? Okay, sorry about that. Um, 
I've never used Teams for this kind of purpose before. So I'm going to skip the video. Basically, it just, you know, an API is a way to interface with other technology. Um, and let's go more into that. If you want to see the full video, I can link it to you in the uh, Google Drive. But OK, so an API overview. Um, it stands for Application Programming Interface. It's used in tons of commercial products. And it's used so commonly that most consumers never realize that their apps or their favorite websites are actually using an API in the first place. So it's very under the hood, but it's very useful for making modern technology work the way it does. All right, why might we want to use an API? Well, the first reason is simplicity. It makes it easier to establish server client connections that takes some of the load off of our front end apps that we make and use. It's really user friendly if implemented the right way. Um, we can develop a simple and intuitive front end for a group of users. They don't need to know what goes on behind that front end. Um, from automation, it can ease automated tasks and certain workflow types. So that's really useful today because automation is starting to really take off in the industry. And efficiency, it gives us as front end programmers a lot more flexibility it can take the load off of the apps that we use or the websites that we use. So we have two separate things and each of them does their task really well, but they're you know separate, so the workload is reduced. All right, how do APIs work? Um, the high level answer that we're gonna consider today is that it kind of works like a messenger. So it delivers your request to a provider, and then in return, it delivers the response back to you. Now, as we start to develop APIs as a group and you guys start to you know, study them on your own for your classes, for your personal professional growth, you'll find that the, the real answer is a lot more technical, a lot deeper than that. But for today, we're gonna consider this higher level approach. We deliver a request, we get a response. All right, so who uses APIs? And the short answer is all sorts of organizations and companies that are part of our world. We have Google, which we're using, Oracle, Facebook has an API, Twitter has an API. And you might want to stop and consider like if you know of any others. This is a term that not a lot of people um, know about, so you might have an advantage just by knowing any of these already, right? And we're going to learn about even more as we progress with this. Uh, what are they used for? Well, an API can accomplish any number of services. Uh, machine learning uses an API. Service automations can use APIs. Online shopping, math libraries, IP and geolocation. Your favorite email provider might even use an API too to interface with a, a different um, front end. So APIs exist everywhere and they can be used for not just this small section of things, but way more than that. All right, so um, does anybody want to share any APIs that you already know about? Oops, my bad. No one wants to share? OK, fair enough. Um, all right, so that's good. Then we might all be on a similar page with that. And I asked this just to get you to think about, you know, like, do you have you heard the term before? Have you used them before? Do you know friends who might develop APIs? You know, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look at an example. Um, Google Maps. A lot of people don't know Maps offers an API. It can be public. Um, there's also a commercial one. I believe that as a group, we have um, not the public API, but we have a special one that gives us access to all the API features. All right. So as we're thinking about like what is Google Maps, what can it do for us? Also think that we can use this in a way that's unrestricted compared to just a simple public API. So again, the public one has a restricted use. There is a commercial one. You usually have to pay to use the features. And a lot of apps do pay to use those features. And some examples include apps like Uber or Pokemon Go. 
There's actually even Python bindings for Google Maps. And if you have the commercial API, you can do more calls to get things like the geolocation based on an address or vice versa. So if you like Python and you want to play around with that, um, I would encourage you to do so because it does have a lot of features even just on the console. And again, just to note, we have an unrestricted Maps API. I don't believe that has changed. Um, so start thinking now about not just like what could we do in a really small sense, but like how many of these features could we use if we wanted to? All right, to continue, um, we could use this in our projects. So we could, um, the benefit here is we'll use the functionality and the backend of Google Maps. For example, we could do something that would track the locations. So, um, you know, like the thing that came to my mind was something like if we wanted to um, track something like where different organizations on campus might be meeting. You know, we could have little things on a map that says, okay, this group is meeting here or this group is meeting there, right? And that's a really small example, but just so we're thinking about like, what are we doing with this API? We could do something to track locations. Um, it has some room for us to tweak the map functionality or to pick and choose what functionality we want to use to accomplish our goal. So let's say we don't need everything. Well, we don't have to use everything, but it's there if you need it. Now the benefit here is Google's development team is doing most of the hard work. So we're not jumping in Google cars with cameras and taking photos of the city of Tampa to make a map work. Someone already did that for us. We're not maintaining the server for this or the database for this. Someone did that already. So it's really nice because we get all the perks and we don't have to put much work into it aside from learning the API. So they're doing things like researching addresses, maintaining the back end. All right, so again, um, I want to open the floor if anyone wants to chime in. Um, what project ideas like do you think a Maps API could help us solve? And you don't have to answer now if you don't want to. Um, but as we're going through this, again, just we're, we're maintaining this idea. All right, the next thing I want to delve into is the REST API and what that means for our projects. All right, so REST stands for Represent Representational State Transfer. Um, it was conceived around 2000 by this guy, Roy Fielding. He's pictured over here. And the back end is if you go on the website where his dissertation is published, um, you know, this is the first thing that shows up. Um, and again, he proposes as a solution for distributed hypermedia systems. Um, in short, it's a way to help interact with large amounts of data. So that can include multimedia information. It can include sites or platforms that have a large amount of users. And it can deal with repositories that are very large in volume. And if this sounds familiar, well, it should, because in 2020, we have nothing but multimedia information in large bulk, users in large bulk, repositories, just way more than back in the year 2000. Um, but this is something that kind of stuck through the ages. It aged really well, and we still use this REST approach. All right, there's six guiding principles of REST. Um, the first one is client server. So this is a way to improve portability and simplicity like we talked about. So in our case, our app that we're designing and the API that um, or I'm sorry, the app that we're designing would be the client. Google Maps servers would be the server. It should be stateless, which means that the client determines the session state. And it should be catchable. So in other words, the client can use certain request data that it keeps on the client later on. It doesn't just go away after, you know, or it goes away after a certain amount of time, if that's how you design it. Um, but whatever's catched can be used later. Um, the interface should be uniformed, and that's a way to simplify the architecture, increase transparency about how to use the API and what's going on. Um, it should be layered, so that's kind of like the principle of least privilege, where every component only sees or interacts with a necessary layer. It doesn't interact with anything more, it doesn't interact with anything less. 
And the final one is considered optional, and that's code on demand. Um, and this just means that you can execute the code from scripts or applets. And what that does is it reduces a lot of the pre-implemented sources. All right, so in REST, a resource is um, key to getting things done, and that can be any information that can be named. That includes things like documents, images, any collection of resources, um, and in some cases, it can be described as non-virtual objects, and that would include people. Um, again, resources are the key to abstraction to make the REST model work. The other term that kind of goes along with this is a resource identifier. And what that does is it identifies a resource in between components. All right, and um, again, like a resource representation would just be a resource state at a given timestamp. That's a more formal definition. And a resource representation would consist of things like data or media, hypermedia links, to kind of sum that up, it would be what resources are present at a given time. Now, I wanted to go over a couple other ones that um, Alex sent to me that I thought could be really useful as we're moving forward. Um, the first API is the Dialogflow API. Uh, we can use this to build conversation interfaces. Um, it can do things like create chatbots and even use voice powered apps and devices. As a group, we could use this to implement some kind of interaction between other people who are using our app or even other people using the app and us as the developers. It also is kind of cool because that gives us the potential to allow our project to integrate really nicely with voice services or interfaces. And I didn't have too much time to look into what that meant, so I'm really curious to know, like, what are the limits of these voice services and interfaces and what does that mean for you know, what we want to accomplish when we get to that point. The other one is the Keras API, and it's one that's designed for deep learning. Um, it seems like it could be really useful in terms of reducing cognitive workflow of real people. So maybe taking some of the monotony out of really mundane or repetitive tasks. And that's a really useful thing when we think about the modern workplace where we're constantly trying to alleviate rote, repetitive tasks off human beings and put the honest on computers. And so, you know, I wonder as I look at this API, if one of our projects could be used to solve that problem in our community. So, you know, thinking about like, what are some rote tasks that nobody wants to do, but certain people in our community have to do it anyways? And how could we develop something that would take that load off them? All right, so again, like we want to think about any other API types that you know about. You might know of some now. Um, you might find some or encounter others as this year goes on, maybe in the next couple of weeks. So if you encounter an API, you know, my challenge to you is think about how you can apply that and think about how you can specifically apply that to the project when we get to that point. Again, looking ahead, um, we discussed the maps API, but we can also go over um, examples of the Google Cloud API and those other resources in Drive, if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, we are going over a workshop for making a REST API in Python, and I believe Alex will be running that, but I'm um, not sure off the top of my head. It sounds really cool, and I'm really excited about that one. And again, we're going to be creating our own API, and the purpose of that will be to give a service to a group or a specific customer. So again, start thinking about like the problems in the USF community or the community at large, and what can we do through an API to solve that problem, or at least help solve it. Again, our solutions challenge will be where we showcase what work we've done um, so we can think about like how will making an API give us that advantage over other Google student developer groups. Again, the API should be kind of for the common good. So we're not just making something to show off, but we want to make something that's meaningful. We want to really think about how we can help people 
with what we're doing. And again, we're always open to other ideas and solutions. So there, in my opinion, like there are no dumb ideas. If it's sincere, then you know we want to hear about it, and you are always welcome to reach out. And so the last thing that um, I'm going to leave you with here at the end of this presentation is sketching out a quick plan for you know the club, the future of the club, and maybe taking some things that you learned today and applying them to these things that we're going to be doing. Um, this is up in the slides on our director folders, so I don't have this in a separate document yet, but I did list out some of the really helpful ones or the ones that I found helpful um, sources that you can use to start creating your API, to start planning an API, thinking about it. If you want to reach out and get these, I will have this in another Word document at some point in the near future. All right, and that takes us to our last slide. Um, I don't have any more content for you. I just wanted to give you guys space to share any ideas that you had um, throughout this presentation and anything that you learned about that you think would be useful to discuss, any project ideas. Um, you know, now's your time. I'll kind of step back and, you know, let you guys take the lead on that. So, does anybody have any ideas of how we can use this API thing to give ourselves an advantage when we go to do this project? Um, leaving the floor up to you guys. OK, um, I'm going to assume that means maybe we don't have any ideas, which is fine. Um, this, you know, it was a lot of information to take in. Um, do you guys have any questions as, you know, just any questions in general that you want to ask before we stop this training? Okay, I'm going to open the Q&A. Oh, um, so there's a QA question. Let's see, I'm just seeing this now. Okay. Um, can we track users inter can we track users interaction to track COVID? That's a really good one. Um, I don't know who asked this, but I like that question a lot. So yeah, that's a great example. Um, maybe we could develop a map or some kind of map resource using the API from Google Maps. We could track COVID cases in our community and we could see you know, like what else could we do with it? How could we take that data and really help USF? So I, I like this idea a lot. Thank you for whoever submitted that. Um, the next question, utilizing it for suggestions on forms that require an address. Um, whoever asked the address question, I'd be interested in more information. Um, I think, I think I, what, what I'm seeing here is like autofill. I like autofill a lot. And I think that could be helpful for our users. So I'm interested to know more about um, what that looks like to you. So thank you. Can Android Studio also be considered an API or as an ID? Um, I don't really, I don't know. That's a good question. Alex or Indu or someone, do you know if Android could be considered an API? I am actually not sure. Okay. Um, tell you what, whoever anonymous, whoever asked this, I'm going to copy your question down. If you want to leave some contact information, I can reach out to you separately. But thank you for asking that because I never would have thought of that. Um, can we share the slides? Indu, we can share the slides. Thank you for noting that in our Slack channel. Um, how do you implement an API? Thank you for whoever asked this. Um, we're going to be implementing an API. So what that looks like and how we do it, that's going to depend on the group. So whoever asked this one, please come to our next training. It's going to be all about implementing an API, and I think you'll learn a lot from that. Um, I just joined. Any more details regarding the project? Um, regarding the projects, I think we're kind of in the brainstorming phase right now. So 
I'm, it's not too clear to me if we have any more information aside from what I, I gave you. Does anybody want to speak on that? Or? OK, um, I'll reach out to this person separately. Thank you for asking. Is ASP.NET related to REST API? Um, to be honest with you, I've never used ASP.NET, so I'm not really sure if that would be um, a good implementation or if that has relevance to the REST API. Um, I'm interested to find out, though. So. Is there a general purpose API environment that's popular? Um, Again, this is a great question, and I really wish I had an answer for you. I know that a lot of the popular APIs that we're going to be using, um, they have specific purposes, and I'm not really sure what general purpose um, would look like. But again, for the Python training, like please show up for that, because we're going to go over, I think, in a more generic 10-minute overview, like you know, how do we set up an API environment? Um, I asked it to track travel history. Yeah, we could solve travel history with our app. And yeah, cool. Good questions. Um, thank you guys for asking this. Are there any final questions before uh, we convene? All right, um, that's all I have for you guys then. I will try to reach out to you guys who had these specific questions that I couldn't answer today. Um, before I go, I did want to let you guys know again, Alex is going to be working a Python workshop next week. That's gonna be the second workshop in this series. If you have kind of specific questions by this point about like what an API can do, how we can make one, that's really gonna be the workshop for you. So I'm again, I'm really excited about that one. Developing an API is something that I've wanted to do uh, for a long time because I'm just that kind of person. So I hope to see you guys there as well. Um, if there aren't any other questions, then I'm going to end and I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for coming out.